Stay tuned for your weekly news review on STVS. Hello and welcome to your weekly news and review in English on STVS. I am Sorona Norton. The first modern Coast Guard boat, which should usher the beginning of adequate patrols on the Surinamese waters, was welcomed with joy. Commander Jerry Slainhart is happy with this acquisition and sees the efforts for setting up a professional Coast Guard, which should improve safety on our waters, rewarded. With lots of enthusiasm, those present at the compound of the Port Authority witnessed the unloading of the first Coast Guard boat for Suriname, the 72, as Commander Slain Hart called it at a press conference on Wednesday, June 26. Major General Rudy Ruplal also confirmed the arrival of the vessel and he is happy with the acquisition. He thanked the government and congratulated the whole community. In principle, the new boat was scheduled to arrive this week in Suriname, but at the meeting with the press, it was indicated that customs clearance had taken place on Thursday, June 27. To ensure the security on the Surinamese waters, a number of issues are already being dealt with in a professional manner. An important aspect is the acquiring of the necessary expertise. This in order to be able to give good interpretation to the role of the Coast Guard. The fishermen and the Maritime Authority Suriname have also explicitly indicated what the importance of the impact of a Coast Guard in Suriname can be. The monitoring of the quality requirements of international shipping will soon take place, not only in the inside waters of Suriname, but in cooperation with the Coast Guard also at sea. At a press conference of, on Friday, June 27, President Desri Bautusur ensured the implementation to the agreements which were made in China. President Bautusur again repeated that it is unique for our country to sign agreements with the Chinese government. According to the President, our country is blessed with natural resources which will be manufactured to end products by a cooperation with China. As previously reported, the delegation which departed to China was very diverse. The President of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Henk Narendorp, who was part of the delegation, says that it was a visit in which good deals were made with the various companies there. Arrangements were also made in respect to the building of the hospital in the district of Wanika. Elisa Carter, project coordinator, says that for too long this construction has been discussed with architects. Finally, President Bautusser talked about the speech which he held during his visit to China. Starting from this month, Experts from China will pay a return visit to Suriname to further develop on the agreements made in China. CKC and Company NV, better known as Kerstin, will establish a study fund within the framework of their 245th anniversary. Kerstin celebrated its 245 years in Suriname on Saturday, June 29, and it can look back on a vibrant past, but focuses primarily on the future. The history of Kerstin is closely intertwined with the missionary. In 1765, Christopher Kerstin came with two missionaries to Suriname. The clergymen had to tend for themselves, and therefore Kerstin opened a tailoring and manufacturing business in 1768 in the Steinbacherei Strat. A bakery, a watchmaking workplace, a timber market, and a transport company followed afterwards. In 2013, Kerstin provides work to approximately 917 people. Kerstin wanted this anniversary to be a special celebration by giving something back to the community. It chose for setting up a study fund, Foundation Study Fund Kerstin. This will give socially disadvantaged children the chance to study at a higher education institution in Suriname. 
The fund starts with an amount of 245,000 US dollars. Kirsten will also present an award each year to a scholarship holder with the best grades or one who has given an exceptional social contribution to society. Shivara Blackson was named Missy Ketty Koti 2013 on Friday, June 28. In a packed Anthony Nesty Sports Hall, the Missy Ketty Koti was held for the 10th time. Every year, this event is organized by the foundation Missy Ketty Koti. The purpose of the event is to stimulate the transfer of culture among the young people. Siomara Simmons is president of the foundation. Each year, the foundation selects a different model to make the activity a success. It is a Surinamese thing and this must be preserved, says Simmons. The old board led by Irma Zape has transferred the mandate to a new board led by Simmons. In the context of 150 years, Keti Koti, the foundation Missy Keti Koti had also engaged in social activities. The fountain at the Valiant Square is again in operation. Sunday evening at 8 o'clock, the official reopening of the fountain took place. About two weeks ago, the Department Street Maintenance Service of the Ministry of Public Works started with the cleaning of the fountain. The monument was washed, the dirty water was sucked out of the fountain, and it was completely cleaned. Afterwards, the fountain and lamp post in the square got a paint job. Then the fountain was refilled and tested on Sunday. On Monday, the fountain sprayed again, just as John Lecton had promised. The head of the department, Public Green, promised that the fountain would be in use for July 1. The fountain was illuminated by Ruley's lighting. STVS News asked Mr. Lecton how the Valiant Square and in particular the fountain will be maintained. Lecton calls on the public as a whole to keep the environment clean. On Monday, July 1, different cultural organizations have, in their own way, thanked their ancestors and heroes who have fought against slavery, resulting in its abolition. A special parade was held in downtown Paramaribo with a route along special places from the time of slavery with the statue of Kwaku as end point. It is remarkable that the location where the Kwaku statue stands is the ideal place to experience and commemorate afro surinamese cultural ceremonies. At various places in our country this day was celebrated, sometimes exuberant and in some places in reflection. The first health insurance cards of the National Health System, NZS, were presented to the students of the Thomas Aquino School. In the course of the last week, the cards were distributed to the schools in order to hand it over to the students. As of Tuesday, July 2, all children between 0 and 16 years are insured by the state, says Vice President Robert Amerali. On Tuesday, President Desri Bautasar handed over the insurance cards to the students of the Thomas Aquino School, where he himself was once a student. It was for both the head of state as the school principal a special moment. But the president indicated that everything is due to the vice president, Robert Amerali, the tripartite dialogue, and the business community. With the handing over of the cards, the first part of the national health care system has been carried out. 130,000 people are eligible for the national health care system. People who already are insured at the state insurance fund SZF with their children do not fall under this scheme. Within three months, the Consulate of Haiti is established. That's according to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Winston Lakin. President Bautasar and President Michel Martelet have pleaded for the establishment of the consulate. Lakin said that this is the first time that a consulate has been set up in such a short period of time. 
the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Haiti, Pierre Richard Casimir, was especially in Suriname for this occasion. Casimir is pleased that the Haitians will now have an institute in Suriname where they can go. The consulate is situated on the Limapo Strat and the consul is Alex Jos Pitre. The new Minister of Education, Ashwin Adin, was sworn in on Wednesday. The 33-year-old technocrat with a versatile curriculum vitae had an important message for his audience. To be successful in his work, the minister wants to work toward what he calls practical efficiency. This should eventually lead to the creation of conditions to become a welfare state. Education has, according to the new minister, three welfare principles, namely ethical consciousness, human concerns, and practical efficiency. Practical efficiency requires knowledge, dedication, conviction, and confidence. According to the President, the ministries of public health and education should be discarded of their political significance. These ministries are of great importance as a foundation for a prosperous nation. He is still of the opinion that the right man should be in the right place. The new minister indicated that he soon will discuss his culture and management message with his staff. And that takes us to the end of your weekly news and review in English on STVS. For more information, you can visit our website, that's www.stvs.sr. I am Sarona Norton, thanking you for joining us.